You ever wonder how long it's gonna take you to lose your muscle mass after all that hard work in the gym? I'm Thomas DeLauer with sixpackabs.com and today I'm giving you legit science referencing peer reviewed studies on how long it truly takes you to actually lose muscle if you were to take a small layoff or rest from your general training. Hey, if you haven't already, I really encourage you to check out the link in the description that links to my science-based six-pack intermittent fasting program. It's literally the world's leading fasting program and the world's leading time under tension, very specific training program. So check that out. But first, let's get to the science. So here's the interesting thing. Just so you know, it's really pretty hard to lose muscle mass unless you're completely immobilized. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna break down some science with some nice peer reviewed studies that give us a good perspective on how fast you'll lose muscle if you're someone that's training regularly versus how fast you'll lose muscle if you're completely immobilized, like totally bedridden or literally immobilized. Okay, two different worlds and two different kinds of people too. Lifters versus people that don't work out at all. Might have a slightly different result. So what I wanna help you understand is that you don't lose muscle quite as fast as you thought you would. So the first study was published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology, and this one blew my mind. Actually, this was one that put my mind at ease, to be completely honest, because this was something that I was concerned about until I started reading into some of the research. So this study took a look at two different groups. Okay, one group of people, they had trained for 24 weeks continuously, maybe a couple days off here and there, but 24 weeks of solid high-intensity weightlifting. The other group went for six weeks, then three weeks off six weeks on and three weeks off for a collective total of 24 weeks. So both groups were measured over 24 weeks. Just one group trained straight through and the other group went six weeks at a time with three week rest periods. So what they were trying to measure was if there was a deloading phase, would you lose muscle? Well, believe it or not, what they actually found was that at the end of the study, both groups had gained the same amount of muscle, not lost. Both groups gained muscle and actually the exact same amount after 15 weeks. Up to 15 weeks, it was a little bit ambiguous. Probably has to do with the fact that the central nervous system wasn't all the way firing until a couple weeks into the actual program or study. But still, at the end of the 24 week period, there was muscle that was actually gained, not even lost. And that's factoring in three full weeks off. I don't know about you, but I can't even imagine taking three weeks off. So this really puts my mind at ease. Okay, so this helps us understand what happens if you're an experienced lifter, or maybe just someone that's even a recreational lifter that lifts from time to time, maybe a few times per week. Your muscle mass is there, okay? That's called your clay mass. I call it your clay mass because it's what you are sculpted from, it's what you've worked hard for, and the hormones have really allowed you to build that. It doesn't go away quite as easy as you thought. But the next study was published in the Journal of Physiology, and this one took a look at a different ball game. This one took a look at lower leg unilateral suspension. What does that mean? It basically means they took the shin and immobilized it so you couldn't use the calf. And they took a look at two different groups. They took a look at a group that was measured from zero to 10 weeks, and then the other group they wanted to measure from 10 to 23 weeks to see overall how much atrophy would occur, how much muscle loss would occur. Well, they did find when the leg was completely immobilized, mind you, not able to even use the calf muscle at all, or the tibialis, that there was a 5% reduction in muscle size after about 10 weeks, and about a 10% reduction in muscle size after about 23 weeks. So safely put, if you were bedridden or totally immobilized, you would probably start to lose your muscle mass at a rate of five to 10% over the course of a few weeks. That's still not as bad as people think. And the fact is that muscle is gonna come back about three times faster than it took you to build it in the first place due to something known as muscle memory. Our bodies are very, very amazing when it comes to that. So unless you're completely immobilized, you're not gonna lose muscle. You can take some time off. But let me help you understand why you might be feeling a little bit deflated when you do take some time off. The first one has to do with your central nervous system. When you work out, whether you realize it or not, you're taxing your CNS, your central nervous system. You're putting it under a serious load. You're sending nerve signals down to the muscle aggressively to lift heavy weights. This puts a strain on it, but it also means that your central nervous system is going to be activated later on. Maybe you've heard that if you're overtraining, you have a hard time sleeping. The reason is because your central nervous system is still firing like crazy. But what that means is your central nervous system is sending signals to the muscles still, which means they're gonna tighten up, okay? That means you're gonna have that harder, fuller look. You're gonna look more dense because your nerves are constantly contracting. This may seem like a cool thing, and it's great if you're trying to look good before you're going out, but it's not good if it's happening constantly. You need to take some time off. But that's why after a week or so, you start to realize you look a little softer, but you're not really softer. You're just taking a break from training and your nervous system isn't going totally haywire. The next reason you look a little bit flatter and smaller is inflammation reduction. 
This is a good thing. If you ever want to heal, you have to reduce inflammation. And after a workout, you're going to feel swollen. It's not just a pump. It's literally inflammation at its very root doing its job. You broke down muscle fibers, so you have trauma. That is inflammation, okay? Then the last reason that you're going to look deflated and you're going to look flat and you're going to feel like you're getting fat and smaller is simply because your glycogen stores aren't being activated as much. When you use your carbohydrate stores when you're training, like through glycogen pathways, like lifting heavy weights, you are activating a system, activating the glycolytic pathway. It, when you take a break, your body's like, well, I don't need to be activating this glycolytic pathway as much. It seems like a waste of energy. So it kind of steers it back and goes more towards beta oxidation a little bit. This means that you have less carbohydrates stored in the muscles because the body doesn't see the reason to store them at that very point in time. So what happens? You shrink a little bit. But the second that you go back to heavy training, I mean within two days, you puff right back up, your muscle density comes back, and you're right back to where you were. So more than likely, my point in saying this is that you're not losing muscle, you're probably just deflated, and you're probably just losing some of that glycogen and it's messing with your head a little bit. So if you want to understand more of the science and learn a little bit more about how your body's actually working when it comes down to training, but more so when it comes down to nutrition, I highly encourage you to check out my program in the description below. But otherwise, just keep it locked in here on sixpackabs.com and we'll show you the ropes for the basics and for the advanced. I'll see you soon.